Alhamdulillah, he managed to come down and did Hajj with us. Isn't that great? So, if you really have sincere, sincere commitment to Allah, He makes things easy and He makes them beautiful for you. But it always starts with you. You have to initiate it. But if you come to Allah walking, He comes to you running. If you come to Him a handspan, He comes to your arm's length. And you know what this means. You do a little, Allah does a lot. So always initiate that. If you think we have a disease, if you see that in us, then what can you do? Immediately start correcting yourself. Because that's where it starts. I'm not going to be able to change the world by going to Mr. Bush or anybody else and tell them anything. They don't listen to me. But I can do a lot by changing me and my family and the people around me. And that's really what it's all about. That's my personal advice to me. See if it works for you. Next question. Oh, he wants to know, what were the details we added to the speech from David Millikan that made the people do the shahada? Absolutely nothing. It wasn't me. It was Allah guided the people. I've never ever really succeeded in getting people to come to Islam. Never. Allah did it and I was standing there. I swear that's all it is. I'll be talking and giving my strongest sales points and Islam, Islam, and they walk away. And other times I'm messing all up. I'm going, uh, uh, where's my book? And they go, okay, I'm ready to do shahada. It's not like, don't think it's I'm selling used cars here. That's not how it works. Even when I've seen hundreds of people at one time, the most of it is almost like 300 people, 280 actually, stood up and all said shahada at the same time. Some of them were Muslims and never made shahada before. Some were, you know, uh, been around Islam a while. Some were brand new to Islam. But it doesn't matter. It's Allah that gives them the shahada, not me. What's the hardest thing or dearest thing you had to give up in order to accept Islam? Pride. That was the hardest thing of all. There were a lot of little things along the way. I was in the music business on and off for 38 years. We had our own line of pianos and organs, the Estes piano, Estes organ, and we were very proud of that. Well, that wasn't the hard part. The hardest part is just the personal pride. You have to admit you're wrong. It's really hard. You know, preaching Christianity, telling people about something, and now all of a sudden you go, oops. How do you go back to the people and say, oops, guys, <laughs> you remember that three-in-one deal we talked about? Forget that. <laughs> remember the cross? Okay, scrap that deal. No, it doesn't fly real well. You know. What was it and how did you overcome the circumstance? Yeah, only Allah saved me. Only Allah saved me because really it got really tough a couple of times and I didn't know what I was going to do and I, and I said so I don't know what I'm going to do next and then Allah would make some way real obvious to me and real easy for me. Alhamdulillah. So just as Allah gives you the test, He's the one that makes it easy. And Ursa is the hard part and Yusra is the easy part. Is that right? It's hard to say Ausra too, isn't it? Uh, is it IslamYesterday.com or IslamTomorrow.com? It's like I can't make up my mind, right? It's IslamAlways.com which will lead you to the other two plus some others. We have a lot of websites. I took all the websites like that to keep non-Muslims from getting the websites and messing them up. Because I knew if they got those names, they could do a lot of bad damage. So we took, actually we have over 123, I think, domain names. We don't use them all, but we keep people from getting those because we know the damage that they could do with some of these. Second question, can you move here? <laughs> that probably came from the brother's side. <laughs> I don't think the sisters would want me to come after the jokes that I just made about that. <laughs> Having four wives and stuff. Let's see. Okay, this is, uh, I don't know if this is a um, question or is this a khutbah. It says, based on personal observation, it seems that out of all the new Muslim converts, whites constitute a very small percentage. Question, is that true? Answer, yes. And if yes, why? Hmm. And what can be done to reach that community? Okay, ask yourself, 
why do some people come to Islam anyway? Allah guides them, right? And if they came, Allah guided them. And if they didn't come, it's because Allah didn't guide them. Does that make sense? Does it make sense to me? So those who don't want to be guided, don't get guided. And in this particular country, not all countries, but in this country, the majority of the white people already have all their salvation that they want. They have everything they want and they're real happy with it. Okay? In fact, their statement could, instead of being that Jesus is the way, another statement they could make real easy, and I've heard it before, is when you're white, you're right. Okay? So they have a lot of prejudice, and when you have prejudice, Allah doesn't guide you. He will not guide people that are prejudiced. Because if you can look at somebody and say, I don't like them because they're of this ethnicity or from this nation or from this group or whatever, if that's all you need just to look at them and you can decide that, then Allah doesn't need you. And He will reject you. So this is a very important lesson for us that when we look at anybody, we can't judge them like that. Allah doesn't like that. And that is a problem with a lot of white people. I know, I used to be white. <laughs> but seriously, there are good white people just as there are good any color people. And to get the message out to the people, you have to do exactly what we said today. And that's the answer right there. You know how many people came to Islam from these CDs? You want me to tell you? I don't know either. A lot. A lot. I see it on my website. So many times they come and they say, I got one of your CDs. And you don't know how many times maybe the CDs you made have helped people get to Islam. I hope. But at least you get reward for the effort whether they do or not. And I'm saying that because this is what we do. We did this for that reason because we saw it work. I tried a lot of stuff. I tried in the beginning, by the way, the very beginning, I thought debating was the answer because people gave me a tape, a videotape and said, watch this tape, it's a debate and if you do that, people come to Islam. I watched it and watched it and watched it and tried to use stuff out of it and guess what? Nobody came to Islam. In fact, I turned off everybody I knew. They hated Islam. They hated everything about Muslims even more after I tried to use all that stuff. You know why? Because it's insulting. It's very insulting to go to somebody and say, your book is wrong. You're stupid. You don't know anything. It's very insulting. You wouldn't like if people did it to you. And you would close your mind. You wouldn't listen to them anymore. Even when they made sense. Three cannot equal one. That makes sense. But not anymore, not to them. You just shut that all down with that debate stuff. It wasn't until I started really studying the Sirah or the life or the biography of Muhammad Sallallahu that I learned what real Dawah is about. If you look at how he operated and how he talked to people in 13 years didn't even allow the Muslims to defend themselves any more than just the basic defense when somebody's beating your head in the ground. To put your arm up, that was about it. The Muslims didn't strike back for 13 years. I mean, you know, and we go out here all aggressive and charged up. And we, uh, I'm sorry, but we act like we're with Jehovah's Witnesses or something like that. You know, and this is not right. It's not acceptable. And so, if you want to see people come to Islam, read what it says on this little thing. I highly recommend this thing. You should take it and use it, inshallah. What are the good ways and how to purify the heart? This is a very important part of Islam is this purification of the heart. And we have uh, two things on our website. One's an article about it. If you go to islamtomorrow.com slash articles and read it. Or if you will listen to it, we have it on tape as well. Because this is something that we desperately need, all of us, to spend time cleaning out this heart. And the Prophet ﷺ told us about the heart and how the, once it gets so many black spots it becomes like a rock and the only way to clean this and he told us about that and what is it? Huh? well there actually is more than one hadith about it one is reading the Quran the other one is remembering Allah and another one is remembering death and this will really help 
There's a program we have about death too. I highly recommend that one because when you realize how short this life is and you think about any second I could drop dead, then it's serious. It happens sometimes. I say this and then the next day somebody that was in the program with us is dead and we go, whoa, that could have been any one of us. That could be anybody and it could be any age. Death, when it comes at its appointed time, is no respecter of wealth or position or your, your level of society or anything else. Your education, nothing's going to stop that Malakal Moat when he comes, is that right?